Hey everybody, this is Bo back in the lounge. Want to do a shout out to the 1.5 million listeners all over this planet of ours and the military bases that make those numbers climb. We get a chance to go to Northern Michigan University, talk to boxing coach Al Mitchell. Coach, thank you. No problem, Bo. Anytime you want me, you know I'm there for you. Absolutely. You know, you know, Coach. A lot of people love you. We just had, we just talked to Pinklin Thomas, Jackie Kalen, Danny Baxter. The list goes on of the individuals that are such giant supporter of everything you've done over the years and currently. Um, I don't know if you know how many fans love you. Well, the thing is, I've been blessed. Um, a lot of coaches trust me with their young athletes. And, you know, I don't try to turn them pro. I try to tell them what is right and what is wrong. And you got to understand, 99% of our athletes is from in the hood. So I, I learned how to deal with them because I come from the hood. And I've been very blessed. Coaches trust me with their athletes. If it wouldn't be for the coaches, I probably wouldn't have been even here. You know, Coach, the big trust factor, it, it, there's a major element in that. To When you take a, a, a student into the boxing world, you've got so many issues and so many question marks that can pop up. And if those trainers, coaches, and even parents do not believe in your message um, because there's issues, it really hurts the overall program. Your program has been one of the top notches. People who have worked with you talk about it. Um, there's just so many things to say about how you conduct business and how you conduct the athlete. You um, Online, we had posted, a, obviously, a YouTube piece on you, and we were very excited about it. And we had one guy that came out and said something negative. Uh, however, you had hundreds that came out in support of everything that have actually been in your gym, have worked with you over the years. Um, you know, Coach, I, I'm not sure sometimes if, if the coaches like yourself realize how many fans they have and the positive message that you instill in all of us. I, I think when I really realized it, when Vernon Forrest died, I had over 500 people call me and email me. And a friend of mine called me up, Coach Abdullah from the Army. He's the head coach of the Army program. He said, Coach, um, every kid that I know come through that program, the first one or two, they can't stand you, hate you. <laughs> Everyone after they leave that program, they, they, they talk about how great you is, how good a coach you is, but how good a mentor you outside of the sport. And that's what life's all about. Absolutely. Now, Coach, there's some changes going on in the U.S. Olympic team. The U.S. boxers right now are over in Italy doing very well. Gomez looks like he's doing fine. Um, it looks it looks as though we're going to be primed to go to the Olympics, but there's a change going on, which a lot of people are talking about in a positive way. The ladies get to join us in boxing finally. Yeah, you know, I always wanted the ladies there, and I think it's good. But I didn't want it to cost us, us losing a spot. We lose 47, one of the most productive sports ever in the history of our sport. Why? USA Boxing always do well at 147. Now they come around and take another weight. Now we got 108 to 115, 123, 132, and then back up to the regular weights from 32 on up. But every time, and it hurts when because you want the women in there, but also they take away from the men. And our sport is dying. If anybody tell you anything different, they crazy. <laughs> That's now, right. Uh, they could find a way that they give the, the women at least eight spots and get the men 12 spots, go back up to the weights. You know, it just seems like everything they do is to hurt the USA team. And I just don't believe that. It's a balance that they try to cut the numbers. And the more they cut the numbers the more they could hurt the men. And let's, let's, be, let's do, use logic and common sense. You know and I know after this Olympic, the women, they're they going to want to be even up with the men, and they got a right to be even up with the men. So you give them three more spots, guess what? They're going to take another from the men. You give them three more spots, they're going to take another from the men. I really believe in my heart, five, six, or eight years from now, it's only going to be eight weight classes for men and probably six weight classes for women. I really see it. It's just killing our sport, though. That's why you see all the athletes now going professional. Yeah. You know, and that, there's a lot of passion behind that is – you know, we're talking about, for example, I'm going to give you an example of mismanagement. In wrestling, they're going to try to move wrestling out of the March Madness for Basketball into its own area. However, they may have to stagger. Well, if we apply common sense to that, the NFL bought the um, Arena Football League and moved the season. And what did it do for Arena Football? It killed the season. Nobody bothered checking at it. Arena football is now dead because of the economy. But is it because of the economy or they moved it? I think it's a, I think it's a lot of both. And within boxing, boxing needs to stabilize itself and enhance. You don't enhance by taking away. I agree with that. 
Yeah. You know, in 96, they told me um, when I was the head coach in Atlanta, that was the biggest group ever. I think it was over 400 and something. Now, with this new scale, you have 250 mailboxes, and you have 36 female boxes. So that makes no sense to me at all. And you know and I know if they want to do the women justify, I mean, make it right for them, they should at least gave them six weight classes. I mean, look at the way the weight classes is. Um, you're talking about um, um, 123 to 132, 152 to 165, and 112, 106 to 112. And it's funny, weight's in there. But but that's not justifying them. That's not to me. Sure, all the women go say, hey, um, at least we're in the Olympics. That's not what it's all about. If you go do it, let's do it right. Let's give them six weight classes or eight weight classes and keep the men, give them back to 12. You know, a long while back, I, I asked them, why don't they take the men's boxing and the wrestling because of the way they're cutting the sports and make it a, put it in the Winter Olympics? The Winter Olympics only got. Um, 2,500 when the men's in the Summer Olympics it's got 11,000. Yeah. And our sport is inside anyhow. <laughs> yeah, for real, Coach. That's true. So it, it makes no sense to me, you know. They say, well, when is Saboni supposed to be for winter when it's snow and so-and-so and so-and-so. But you're killing the sport. Yeah, the sport doesn't need any other reasons to click off the channel or not visualize it. Um, you know, a wrestling is is up there with you as well as far as challenges, and they need as much positive press as possible. But, you know, Coach, to be honest with you, if we had trainers like the Al Mitchells, boxing wouldn't be in its condition right now. The Army guy's doing a good job down there as well. We've read about an article on him. Um, but, however... Boxing as a whole needs more trainers and managers who are cut from the same cloth as you are, and there's not that many out there. I mean, you can put a hand, there's not even a handful of managers that you can go to right now and talk about the same issues that you talk about with and how you instill pride, character, honesty into the sport. Um, you know, we need more people like you that, that really link up the sport with the fans. When I was coming up, most of the coaches was older. 40s, 50s, and 60s, all of them had beard when I come up. And I come up in a tough neighborhood, Philadelphia. Everybody could box, even the women and everything. But I believe it's a lot of, it is a lot of good coaches, but they're frustrated. They just want to walk away from the sport. When you see the way they're killing our sport and the way our sport is pat, 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 just tagging and stepping around, tat, 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 they, the coach is getting frustrated. They don't even want to deal with it. It's a headache. They'd rather go and deal with football or basketball. At least football and basketball got a retirement fund. Boxing don't even have a retirement fund. So you can understand where there's a lot of good people in our sport. They're just tired of it. They're frustrated. Absolutely. Coach, I want to say thank you so much. We're going to get you on probably another month as we keep going step closer. The U.S. Boxing Team will be back in here, and we can talk about some of the stars that are coming out of that program. No problem. You can call me anytime. Hey, Coach Al Mitchell, Northern Michigan University. He's got he's got heavyweight pro champions. He's got champions in the Olympics. He's one of our favorites on the show, and we love hearing the exposure. Coach, we're going to keep you online and give you the link to the article so you can read about it yourself. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks a lot. We are off the air.